So let's talk about the Avada footer customization options that are available with the Avada theme. Uh, there's quite a lot that you can do with the footer area. And once I give you a, a lay of the land, so to speak, you should be able to come in here and set up your footer area exactly how you want it set up. So this is the footer area, obviously. <laughs> you've got the widget section, which is these three blocks here. And then you've got the copyright footer area down here below. So to edit these areas, there's really two main places where you're going to focus your attention. The first is these widgets, and that is if you just hover over the name of the business here on the top left, you can open up widgets. And then the other one is going to be under Avada Global Options, which we will just go ahead and start there. Because uh, this is going to be the global options is going to be more of the styling, so like the colors, the font size, the typography, that sort of stuff. So from here, if we uh, come down to the footer, there's three different uh, options here. So you've got footer content. So you can actually turn the footer widgets off, which would mean that these three sections would completely disappear. So you can toggle that on and off. You can also choose the number of footer columns that you want to have. So each one of these is a column. And we have three columns. We could have four, we could have five, we could have two, we could have one. It's really flexible. You, I think the max you can have is six, though. And then you can choose to center the content here. So if we wanted all this text to be centered and these titles to be centered and these social icons to be centered, then that's what this option would allow us to do right here. You can also choose uh, some effects. You can have a sticky footer. I wouldn't really recommend using that, but um, you can have a parallax effect. So that would be if you're using a footer background image, then you can have the image stay stationary as you scroll. So it kind of gives this cool effect. So that's more of a design element. And then you've got the copyright bar, which is this section down here at the very bottom. And there's only a couple of options for that. So if you've got the copyright bar, you can turn it on and off. So if you don't need it, you can just remove it. You can center the content here, which we've done. So this is already centered, which you can see this is turned on. And then you have the actual content here, which is in a HTML text editor. And then you can just use HTML to put whatever you want in there. So that's the basics. Then there's also the footer background image. So you can put an image in here. You can choose some different settings where you want the image to start from, whether you want it to repeat. So you could do like a square that's like a design and you can have it repeat and it can make a cool design in the footer. Uh, and you can turn the background image on or off and just upload the image from here. And then there's the actual footer styling. So this first, the footer content is uh, more so structure, and then footer styling is is going to be where you have all these options to change the look and feel of the footer. So you can have a hundred percent footer width. When you do that, you can see how this site kind of stops. The content stops at this point right here. If you did one hundred percent width, then this first block would start all the way over here and this last block would end all the way over here. So it basically fits the entire screen no matter what size screen you're on. So that's the 100% footer width. There's footer padding. So with these uh, elements, these widgets here, you can choose so you can see that there's padding above. So between this white space and this first bit of text here, there's about, well, what do we have it set at? 43 pixels. 43 pixels of padding there, and then there's 40 down here. So you can change the left and right, top and bottom padding. You can change the footer background, so you can see we have it at this black color, but we could make it you know, blue if we wanted. We can add a border, a unique border color. So we can have the, whoops. We could have the blue background with a red border. Um, you can use vertical divider lines, which is going to put a line in between each of these. So that's kind of a nice effect to use sometimes. 
And then you can change the, the size of that line. You can change whether it's solid, dotted, dashed, however you want it to show up, and then the color of that border line as well. And then you have the footer widget area padding. So that's actually going to be this distance right here between these two widget uh, columns. So you can see this is about 15 pixels of padding between these two. So you can increase that, decrease it, whatever you need to do. And then you've got the copyright padding. So that's going to be the distance above and below the text, the copyright text here. Copyright border size, we're not using one, but you can set one up and choose the border color. And then you actually have the, the footer header typography. So that's these titles right here. And you can choose the font family. So basically what, what font you want it to show up as. So we could just you know change that. You can change the size. You can make it 50 if you want it to be really big. You change the line height, letter spacing, font color. So we can make it like yellow if we wanted. <laughs> um, and then we have the actual footer font color. So that's going to be all of this text down here. And so you can see that's white, like we have it set here. Then the footer link color. So we have this phone number as a clickable link. And that's showing up as gray. And we want that to be a little bit different than the regular font color so that people know it's an actual link and they'll you know, go click on it. And then when you hover, it's this green color, so we can see that that is showing up when we hover over that phone number. And then you have those same options for the copyright con or the the content in the copyright section. So you can choose the text color, the link color, the link hover color, and the font size. So that is the styling and structure of the footer area. But you'll notice that we weren't changing any of this content in here. So to change this content that is done in the widgets section so in the back end if you're under appearances you click widgets then you'll see there's the blog sidebar widget there's the footer one two and three and that's because we have three columns so essentially each one of these is a column now if we had four columns there would be a footer widget one two three and four same thing with five and six or two or one so within here, we have these different options on the left-hand side that we can choose from. And it's pretty extensive. There's quite a lot. You can add in a form, audio, an ad. There's all sorts of different options here. Social media, calendars, custom HTML, galleries, images, pages, search bars. What, what I typically like to use for a local business is... You know, for SEO purposes, you want the business name, phone number, and address listed on every page of the website. Google likes to see that. So we have that. Get in touch. It's also helpful for people because they can come here, call, stop in and visit. So people have the basic information. They know where you're located. You know, it's important that you're in the correct area if they're wanting to work with you. Uh, so I like to put that information here. I also like to put the social share links here. That's good for SEO as well. And it gives you some credibility if people want to go off and look at your Facebook page and see how it's showing up, they can do that. Uh, and then in the second column, I typically either use a form. So, you know, if someone scrolls down the website, they get to the bottom here and they're ready to work with you, then they can just fill out this form right here and get started. And that's going to be on every single page of the website because this footer is going to show up on every page of the site. The other option here that I like to use is navigation. So if somebody gets down to the bottom here and they still haven't found what they're looking for, we can link them off to other pages that, you know, just like this main navigation menu up here, we can have one that lists out some different pages here where people can then go find other pages on the site. And then with a local business, it's great to embed this Google My Business map here. Google loves to see that for SEO reasons. And it, you know, it shows the reviews, it has different information. People can view the map and get directions. They can you know, pan out and see where you're located. So a lot of advantages to having that map there. And those are all just within these content blocks in these columns. So you know, all we did was pull in this text option here you can just pull it in drop it in I'm just gonna delete it because we don't really need it 
Uh, but then I just listed the business name, phone number, and address right there. So that's that section. And then social media, this is the Avada social links right here. So I drag and drop that in, put the social media profiles, put the feed. So this is the blog feed. So Google can find that. And that's what's creating these social share links right here. And then the last one, oh, and then, excuse me, the contact form. So I'm using formidable. So this is just a short code to embed the form on there. And then we have the map embed here. And so all you do is drag and drop these different elements in. Make sure if you make any changes that you click save. It says save right now, but like let's say we, you know, add in. You want to make sure you click save or else your changes will not appear on the front end of the website here. The other cool thing is you can adjust how these show up on mobile devices. So let's say the social share buttons, um, we want to have, oh, and you can, you can customize. So all I'm doing is, is clicking this Havada widget options. That's going to give some additional options. You can do like a custom background, uh, like border size, divider color. And another cool thing is content alignment. So this one is inherited from the global settings. But here we can set a mobile content alignment. So let's say we want this to be justified left on desktop, but on mobile, we think it looks better when everything is centered. Then you can just switch this to centered, click save, and that's going to center the content of this widget on mobile devices. So that gives you some flexibility there with some additional options. That's pretty much the basics. I mean, we could dive deeper into this. There's just so much you can do in a footer area, but there's anything you have questions about in regards to the Avada footer customization process or different options, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below. I'll be sure to get back to them there. And until next time, take care.